It's the award-winning radio program. Relax and enjoy. And now your host. Hi, all. We want to welcome you to the new segment of A Voice in the Desert. It's titled Manna from Heaven. In this segment, we will share with you some short nuggets of the Word of God. This segment is done with the purpose that you might have a time with the Word of God for those brief moments when you need to hear from God or you just need some rest time in the Lord. Different from our podcast that goes more in detail into the Word of God, the segment manna from heaven are brief and intended to expand your knowledge of God and your intimacy with His Word on a more frequent basis. We pray that it's edifying to your walk with Jesus Christ. God bless. Hi, folks. Welcome to the segment, Manna from Heaven, from A Voice in the Desert. I want to greet you today um, in brotherly love, and I want to say thank you once again for joining our messages. As you can see, it's been a couple of days or a couple of weeks that um, we haven't come out with a new podcast, but the reason for that has been that, um, you know, we are not exempt, you know, from from attacks from the enemy, okay? Not even myself. So for the last couple of weeks, you know, I was undergoing a severe attack on my body. Um, and it came from nowhere, okay? Uh, and I was in the emergency room uh, in the hospital and they moved me to intensive care for four days. Uh, I tell you this in a form of, you know, of what God has done with me in the form of a testimony. Why? Because uh, God has been awesome, okay? No matter what situation are, no matter what giants you face, okay, God will always be with you, even though we may doubt, okay, our faith may be weakened, our knees may be dropped to the floor and we may be helpless without doing, being able to do anything for ourselves, okay? Uh, so in those four days, uh, it made me think a lot and said, Lord, why this? Why now? What happened? But instead of saying, why this? Why this happened? I started thinking on the Word of God and saying, okay, this might be another test. So, if it is, Lord, teach me, tell me, show me, and guide me through this trial. Because you say you're always with us and you never leave us alone. So, Father, I want to say thank you in front of our dear brethren around the world from a voice in the desert. I want to say thank you, Father, for having had mercy on me while I was in the hospital. I thank you for having taken care of me at all times and having great people all around me. Special thanks to my wife and my dad that it were always there near my bed and making sure that I was okay, making sure that I recovered, making sure that the doctors were doing what they were supposed to do. Um, but there is no better guardian than our Father in heaven. So I want to say thank you once again, and it is a privilege to be here with you once again, fighting the good fight talking and preaching about the Word of God. Okay? So, these things were some things that I thought about while I was going through my process, okay? And the title, okay, of today's message is 
destroying your giants, okay? And these giants come in various, various forms, okay? And in some of those forms that the giant comes in, you know, are the attitudes in the way of thinking, the way we think, the way we process things, okay? And one of the giants that I want to present to you, which was my first giant that I encountered, was the giant of fear, okay? So if this giant of fear is coming up against me, those that are in Christ have nothing to fear. So therefore, I will fear nothing because I belong to the Lord and my God is my comforter. But it doesn't help only just to know it and think it. You know, this is where it comes important where you engrave these verses, these biblical verses in your heart. And when you're in the bed and you're sick and you can't read or you don't have the Bible next to you, that's when you have to take out those biblical scriptures from your heart and remember them and pray them. That is the importance of having the word of God engraved in you at all times, okay? So in order to overcome this first giant that I encountered, okay, which is the demon of fear, I'm gonna give you verses. I'm gonna read them to you. And I want you to jot them down. Why? Because when that moment of fear, when that demon of fear comes against you, you are going to quote these scriptures directly from your heart because you're going to commit them to memory. You're not just going to listen to this podcast. You're going to commit them to memory. Okay? And the first one is Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you, nor forsake you. That was the first scripture that I remembered. That he was not going to leave me alone in that hospital. And that he was not going to forsake me. And that helped combat fear. Here goes another one. Jot this down. Psalms 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah to the word of God. Who am I going to be afraid? The enemy? You're striking my body? You're striking me with infirmity? You're striking my soul, my heart, my body? You can strike all of those, but the one that you will never ever touch in us will be our spirit. Because our spirit belongs to the Lord and nothing can kill our spirit. Remember that. Protect and encourage your spirit. Psalms 118, 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? That's correct. Whenever you have a situation and you're coming up against obstacles, or people are making threats to you, talking about you, murmuring about you. Remember Psalms 118, verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Now, this is a favorite one. Proverbs 3, 25 through 26. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. 
for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. I prayed this one very heavily. Why? Because fear came upon me suddenly. Terror and trouble came upon me suddenly. Without any advice, without any warning, it attacked. But that's okay. Because the bigger the attack, the bigger is the calling. And a voice in the desert will continue. With or without me. And it will continue with all of you that are out there. Listening to the word of God. Keep spreading the message. Keep spreading the gospel. And fear no one. Okay? I'm going to give you another one. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Hallelujah. What a strong message. What a promise from God. He says to us, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Don't worry, you are sick down and out, but I will strengthen you, and yes, I will help you. Yes, you can't get up now because you have fallen, but I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That is the God that we serve. And we have just slain one demon, one giant, and that has been fear. And we have slain it with the sword. And we all know what that sword is. That is the word of God. The next giant, the next demon, is called the demon of worry. Okay? And when you're down and out, you start worrying about anything, whether it's your finances, whether it's your health, whether it's your marriage, your soul, um, your children, whatever it may be. Okay? You kill this giant of worry with the sword of God. And the first message that you're going to use is going to be Psalms 43.5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance and my God. So don't be cast down. Don't let your soul be unquieted. Okay? The Lord is with you. Psalms 55, 22. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Awesome word. Put your burdens and your troubles on him. Put your sickness and your disease at the foot of the cross. He's going to sustain you. Why? Because his word says so. And his word doesn't lie. And he says, he shall never permit the righteous to be moved. So if you are a son son and daughter of God, and you are righteous before him, you shall not be moved. Okay? And this is an important one also. Matthew 6, 3. Okay? Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? What he's telling you here is if he's able to take care of the grass and take care of all these things around the world that is within his care, how much more important that we are his most important creation for he take care of us. And he tells us, oh, ye of little faith. He gives us a little reprimand saying, you should know better. I am your father. He know I'm going to take care of you. So, suck it up. Tighten your belt. 
get up out of your seat, start walking the walk, start preaching the word of God, because he's going to take care of you and strengthen your faith. Philippians 4, 6, 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart, your mind, through Christ Jesus. This is a very important verse. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. This one will slay your giant of worry right on its tracks. Why? Because you are acknowledging the power of Christ, okay? The authority that Christ has all over you and how Christ protects you and defends you, right? Through Jesus Christ. Philippians 4.19 And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So, he is going to supply all your needs, no matter where you're at, no matter what situation you are in. He's going to supply them all. And why do I know this? Because he doesn't lie. It might be today. It might be tomorrow. It might be a couple of minutes. Or it might take a couple of months. It doesn't matter because God is never late. He's always on time. 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. I'm going to read that again. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Let it all go. Leave it in his hands. He's going to take care of it. Don't do anything because we're going to screw it up. We're going to make it worse. Remember, our Father knows everything and our Father knows best. He knows us better than anyone in the world because He created us. Even before we were in the mother's womb, He knew our name. He knew our destiny. So, He's going to care for us. You have just slain another giant. You have slain the giant of worry. Here goes another giant. And this one, this one is a wicked one. This is the demon of loneliness. Okay? You know, sometimes we may not be fortunate to have a loved one next to us. Uh, we might not have a family member. We might not have our children to be with us for one reason or another. But I want you always to know that you are never alone. Okay? You have somebody with you. Not just regular somebody. The creator of the universe. Your father, Jesus Christ. That is who you have. So knowing that you have your Father that is with you at all times, even when you are alone, He is always with you. And I want you to record these Psalms, okay, within your heart, okay? And this is Psalms 2710. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. This is telling you, even if your parents leave you, even if your parents die, don't worry, for the Lord will take care of you. That's what his word says in Psalms 27.10. Okay, these are mighty swords. These are mighty spears. These are darts of fire that we're firing at Satan when he comes with us with these things. Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Wow. The Lord is near to those 
that are brokenhearted, and usually when we're alone, we are brokenhearted. And to know that people like us, he will save a contrite spirit. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. I praise you, Father God, for your awesomeness, for your wonderful mercy and grace that you have upon us, Father God. Thank you for taking care of us. I just take this moment to praise and worship you, Father, because you deserve all the worship and all the praise in the world. For you are our only true living God in a world that is upside down, in a world that is increasingly coming against us the Christians, a world that is prosecuting us, a world that is coming and killing us for preaching the good word. But our crown is not here on earth. It's on heaven. And I thank you for that, dear Lord. Praise you. Praise him. People praise him. Take this moment and say, thank you, God, for what you are doing in my life. Thank you, God. A mere thank you will go a long way to your Father to know that you are grateful and that you acknowledge his power and his sovereignty over your life. Here, I'm going to read you Matthew 28, 20. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That one just took the giant of loneliness and just slain it right down in front of you. Because he says, he is with you even to the end of the age. I'm going to read you one more. This is another sword, another knife to put into the devil's back Hebrews 13:5 For he himself has said I will never leave you nor forsake you He will never leave you nor forsake you That is Jesus Christ this is a promise for you You have just slain another giant How with the word of God but in order to fight these demons, you have to know what to do, how to do it. And you do it with the word of God. Okay? Now comes the giant of doubt. The giant of doubt. And here are some words to fight when you're having doubts about what you're doing, when you're having doubts about your faith, when you're doubting, when you're doubting Christ, when you're doubting your calling. We're seeing many, we're seeing many ministers and pastors right now abandoning their ministry and their Christianity. It's like it's the new thing. This is not working for me. I'm sorry, but I've told you a lie. That's what you tell your congregation? Why? You were never a lamb of God. The devil just used you, okay, with a lie to confuse you and take you away from the faith. So people, be careful to whom you listen, to what you listen, and listen only that that comes from the word of God. Now this giant of doubt, you're going to fight it first with Psalms 37, 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Means commit your plans to the Lord. Trust in him that he knows what you're asking for and that it's in conformity in his plan for your life in his plan for this world and he shall bring it to pass Isaiah 26 3 
You, Lord, give true peace to those who depend on you because they trust you. Ah, so when you have it, when you're in doubt, okay, you don't have peace because you don't know what to do. So I tell you, what do you do? You put your trust in God. Why? Because he knows what he's doing. Another spear here. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You say, okay, I have doubt, but I don't understand that one. Basically, what this is telling you is he is supreme. He knows what is best for you, and he knows what he's going to do with you. He's all-knowing. Since you don't know what to do, he's going to take over, and he's going to do it. And what you're going to do is you're going to just sit back and watch God work. Isaiah 59.1 Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ears heavy that it cannot hear. All this is saying is that God's hand is never far from you to reach you and pull you from the depth of your doubt and your desperation. And his ear is always attentive to your pleas. Romans 11, 3, 33. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. What this is saying is, in your doubt, you have to look to Christ for the answer. Because he has them all. He has them all, and he has a way of going and searching that which is your way. Okay? And now, when you're in doubt, that means that your faith has suffered. Or your faith is suffering. Or waning. That cannot happen. Okay? That cannot happen. What you're going to do is, you're going to go to... Hebrews 11.1, 1. now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That is your faith, and that is what you will count on. Another giant that we're going to go ahead and slay right now is the giant of temptations. Okay, this demon of temptation has done so much harm throughout humanity, throughout the ages, that um, that I can't wait for the second coming of Christ to put this demon to the rest for once and for all. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for our arrival of our Messiah, okay, we can start using the sword to kill this giant of temptation. First one is Romans 8.37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So what is he saying? He's saying that we are more than conquerors through these temptations and these trials. Why? Because we're doing it through Jesus Christ. Not on our own, but we're doing it through Jesus Christ. Now the other one is going to be Romans 13, 14. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill its lust. So one of the major temptations that this demon does is it uses your flesh to fulfill lusts that go against the word of God. So when you are confronted with this, time of with this type of temptation, remember Romans 13, 14. 
put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill his lust and run away from that temptation. Next one is 1 Corinthians 9, 27. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. What this is saying, mostly to those that take the word, that teach the word, that pray the word, that speak to others, that evangelize, okay, is that we must first bring our bodies and discipline our flesh and bring it into the subjection and to the power of Christ unless when I preach to others I find myself disqualified because I have committed these sins. Okay? So temptation will disqualify us from our calling if we are not quick and able to repent of that sin and correct it and do it no more. Okay? 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may not be able to bear it. God never tempts anyone. But when the demon of temptation comes by you, okay, and tries to take you captive and make you fall, okay, God will not let you go through a trial that you cannot handle. Therefore, if you cannot handle it, he will make a way so you can escape. He will make another doorway so you can escape and run away from that temptation. What an awesome God. He never lets us fail. He always is looking after us and giving us a way out. A way out. But to what? To find the road to Jesus Christ. Okay? Hebrews 2.18 for in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. This is a beautiful one, and remember that. For Jesus Christ himself suffered, he himself was tempted, since he went through all that process, okay? He is able to save and help us who are being tempted. Because before we were tempted, he was tempted. Okay? So our Father God is always 10 steps ahead of us. Another one. James 4, 7. Please write this down. Engrave it. Download the podcast and play it over and over again until you're able to memorize them. Highlight them in your Bible. Stick them in places where you will always see that message. Okay? And that will be James 4. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Two simple things. Okay? When temptation comes your way, you have to submit to yourself to the power and the glory of God. Second thing is you got to resist the devil and say, Be gone, for my mind is captive to Christ. Be gone, for the blood of Christ has wiped me clean. Be gone, for you have no part in my life. Be gone, be gone. And I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the devil will flee from you. So we have spoken about these giants, these demons that come against us. And we have just given you the weapons to destroy them, to fight them, to make sure you are successful 
and that you do not fail and that you do not fall. We are a family here in a voice in the desert. And we are very happy that the Lord has chosen us to take the word as it is in this holy Bible with no, inter no other manly interpretation, but only his word. Okay, in the guidance of the Holy Spirit to ensure your safe being and ensure when the coming of Christ when the second of when the second coming of Christ comes, that we are caught up with Him in heaven. That is my desire for all of you. Once again, my name is Caesar, and I am a voice in the desert. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Prize, you can also follow us on Twitter. Okay, and our handle on Twitter is A the Desert. That's where you're gonna find the voice in the desert at the handle A the Desert. Okay, so follow us there so you can uh, get our tweets throughout the day and uh, some encouraging messages. You can also listen to our podcast uh, in iHeartRadio. All you have to do is search for a voice in the desert uh, and like us there and put us down as your favorite. And you can listen to us on your daily commute as you're going back and forth in your car uh, and listen to us in, as, uh, at your leisure or at your home. Okay. If you think that was enough, we got another surprise. You can find us at iTunes, okay? On Podcast iTunes. Just search for A Voice in the Desert, and you're going to find us right there. And all you have to do is subscribe to it. And anytime a new podcast is out, uh, it will automatically be downloaded onto your device, okay? You can also follow us at Stitcher Radio. All you have to do is uh, search for A Voice in the Desert. You're going to find us, follow us, and you'll be able to listen to us at your leisure okay and uh but always uh, your first recourse should be a www.avoiceinthedesert.net there you will have all our archive letters message latest messages and also uh downloaded uh materials that uh we provide for you for your learning experience okay once again thank you for listening to us god bless you and uh can't wait to give you our next message on next week okay take care bye Tell your friends and family about us. Please follow us on Facebook and subscribe via iTunes.